Peru is a country along the west coast of South America, chock full of wildlife, natural environments, history, and culture. It's thought that humans first migrated to Peru over 10,000 years ago, as our last ice age was coming to an end. Early Peruvian cultures rose and fell following the ebb and flow of drought until the Incas. The Incas, who have their roots in Cuzco, Peru, first came into being around 1100 AD. They conquered much of South America, but were known for their benevolent rule. Between the mid-1300s and 1500s, the Incan culture spread until the Spanish invaded in 1531. Since then, Peruvian culture has been strongly influenced by Europe and the West, but they hold tightly to some of their native roots. There's a steep gradient between those connected to the world market and those living in smaller communities. To this day, many Peruvians tie themselves to Pachamama, or the Mother Earth, from which they grow their foods and use the water resources. Found so closely to the environment, they're very susceptible to changes in climate. Like has happened in the past, could a sudden change in climate devastate their culture? Are we in the middle of a climate change? There's a lot of evidence out there suggesting that we are. You can see how far back this glacier in the eastern Peruvian Andes has receded in a little over 20 years. How can we learn more about these issues? How can we stretch our understanding further back into the past? Being a climate scientist and a mountaineer, I had the good fortune of being invited on an expedition with scientists from the Bird Polar Research Center who were trying to get to the bottom of some of these questions. Led by Dr. Lonnie Thompson, our goal was to take ice cores from two high-altitude Peruvian ice caps. In areas where temperatures rarely even approach the freezing mark, snow accumulates year after year. Hundreds, even thousands of years of snow can then be drilled up. This snow is not just frozen water. It comes with other compounds, like dust and salts. The chemistry of snow records the climate from which it came. With these tools, we can estimate what climates were like long before humans even started to record temperature. It's actually ice already. I mean, ice from the field, not the ice. several purposes of the current expedition, one of which is to get a record of the past from the Kalkaya ice cap, which we have documented over the last 20 years is very rapidly retreating, and it won't be too far in the future where this archive will no longer be available to us. And Kalkaya is in the southwestern part of the Andes, and its precipitation comes mainly out of, uh, of the uh, Amazon basin ultimately the tropical Atlantic. Corapuna, the second site we're going to, uh, also receives uh, most of its moisture from the Atlantic, except during La Niña's. During La Niña's it gets precipitation out of the Pacific. And we're hoping the chemistry and the isotopes in the snow coming from the Pacific will have a signature so that we can compare the, the El Nino history from Calcaya to the La Niña history from Corapuna 
over the overlap period of these two records. Thin, it's hard to discern them. They look like they average about 1.2 centimeters per year. They give us about 80 years per meter at this depth. But this is exactly what we'd expect. Expect to see diamonds being compressed more and more as we approach the bottom of this iceberg.